It's the most wonderful time of the year. We're making a Julia Child Christmas feast. Six recipes in just one day. It's the Christmas special. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. Season's greetings, everyone. Welcome. And we're gonna do another one of these. To refresh your memory, last month, I cooked up a Thanksgiving feast all by myself in just one day. Why? I wanted to stick to like the real world stresses that go along with prepping and cooking a dinner like that around the holidays. This is a busy time. I nearly went insane doing it, but uh, mission accomplished. And I thought, why not do something like this for a Christmas dinner as well, right? I scoured this cookbook here, Julia Child's The Way to Cook, searching for the ultimate Christmas dinner feast. Spotted it right here. It's a dead ringer for Christmas too, with holly there and some ornaments, Christmas balls, there's a pine cone. Most importantly, it's roast beef dinner with all the trimmings. What this photo has to offer right here, this is what we're making. So what the hell is this, right? Yeah, how to go to the desserts. Found it right here, it's a holiday roulade. It's a rolled up cake. It's my kryptonite. No, 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 no. There's no pressure, there's no stress. This, you're gonna get it done. You're gonna roll up the cake. This is a dressy suggestion, fine for a party or a holiday meal. I like the orange almond cake formula here. Oh my God. She's laughing, laughing at me. This is what we're gonna start with. Gonna get the hard part out of the way first. Into the deep end we go. Okay, so I need a 11 by 17 baking tray. Butter that up and then I need parchment paper and it needs to be enough to go over the edges. That should do it. Time comes to roll this sucker up. You have a little room to play with. Get on the safe side, just lightly grease up the parchment paper too. Julia says to add some flour in there as well, but I don't find that necessary. That is prep. In a blender, three quarter cup of blanched almonds, three tablespoons of sugar. I basically just gotta turn this into like a flour. Okay, next up, gotta go fetch a friend. Of course it's the silver fox. Silver fox. Three egg yolks into the mixer, and then I'm just gonna gradually add in half a cup of sugar. Gradual. Okay, we needed that thickened and pale yellow. I prepped everything in advance, by the way. Here's the grated zest of one orange, half a cup of freshly squeezed orange juice, as well as the pulverized almonds. Sweet, what the hell? What the hell's wrong with you? And if you missed the bowl, just scrape that up. There you go. We're gonna have a quick grocery break. The thanks to sponsor of this video, Thrive Market. So as often as I need groceries over here, I sometimes just dread dragging myself over the store. And if I make the journey and I want sustainable, organic, healthy options, I'm paying up the wazoo. It's dumb how that works, but that's the world we're living. Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store that is on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. Stocked with the highest quality, organic, sustainable products that guarantee savings with every order. Easily making back your annual membership fee and savings. If you don't, they credit you the difference. Okay, so with my haul right here, I saved 82 bucks. Picked up some essentials too. Vital ingredients for the show. Ayo. Tis the season for generosity. Always. When you join Thrive Market as an annual member, they donate a free membership to someone in need. With free shipping over $49, your groceries will be delivered with carbon neutral shipping from their zero waste warehouses. 
Click the link in the description or go to thrivemarket.com slash anti-chef and get 30% off your first order as well as a free gift worth $60 when you join Thrive Market today. Got a feast to make, so let's get back to it. A quarter teaspoon of almond extract. Okay, beat that in. And then I'm gonna slowly add in half a cup of cake flour. Okay, until that is just combined. Thank you. The egg whites from three eggs in a bowl with a pinch of salt and a scant quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. Yeah, you could use the Silver Fox for this, but I have a bad track record with making stiff peaks with that thing. It's the granny mixer. Okay, kind of spaced out there for a second. Do we have soft peaks? Yep, sprinkle in a tablespoon of sugar. Stiff, shiny peaks confirmed. Okay, let's initially add in just some of this to start. Fold that in really quickly. We gotta get the party started. And then once that's all incorporated, just to kind of mix together the two types of consistencies there, uh, let's delicately fold in the rest. Don't shout or you're gonna knock the air bubbles out of them. Cut through and fold over. Counterclockwise, counterclockwise. I don't wanna to toot my own horn here, but that is some of the nicest folding I think I've ever done. It just looks airy. It looks like it's gonna be able to... Very carefully put that over there. Um, okay, so now that we've done the... Everything is going incredibly smoothly right now. You do not want those stiff peaks to deflate. Look at you go, man. Learning from all your mistakes. This thing looks great. Mm. Quickly get that into the oven. It's gotta be on the lower middle rack. Did I say it was 375 degrees? Following Julia's bake time, 10 minutes. This thing looks freaking incredible. So I'm gonna let this rest for 10 minutes, just like so. 10 minutes. I sprinkle a layer of powdered sugar all over the top and that's gonna prevent sticking. Flip this over onto the parchment paper and you just gotta do a big old flip. Nerve wracking, I know. Peel off this parchment paper. Come on. I've wasted so much time and energy and money on Julia's directions for rolling up a cake that I've decided to look online on how to do this the instructions were much more clear. For this particular moment, I'm not following the book. It's a judgment call. Roll the cake up in the parchment paper. So I wanna roll this up tightly, but not super tight. I can't believe I made it this far. Keep going, champ. Come on, come on. Oh, okay, wow, yep. Leave the seam on the bottom. It didn't crack. I can't, I don't think it cracked. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. That's just gonna cool completely. Just get that there. Don't touch that anymore. No time to bask in the successes just yet. Gotta make some praline. So I have a hodgepodge of blanched almonds. Some are whole, some are slivered, but what's about to happen to them, it doesn't matter into the oven. 350 degrees F for 20 minutes. And I'm gonna be like tossing them around ever so often. You know what? Because there's slivered almonds in there, I'm gonna cut the time in the oven short. That was 12 minutes in total. These are lightly browned and the aroma in the air is intoxicating. It's intoxicating. 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 I've arranged a few things to say. I didn't want to be in this position. Four hours ago, I was on top of the world with that cake roll. But Julia, she didn't want me to stay high. She wanted me low. Once the almonds came out of the oven, it was all over. It's just a little thing called praline. I wasn't ready for it. I had three cups of sugar and one cup of water that needed to be boiled until it turned caramel brown. Then I salted, added those almonds, and quickly turned it all over onto a pan until it hardened. However, the sugar crystallized. And long story short, attempt after attempt, all the troubleshooting in the world, a broken thermometer, burnt finger, 
It just wasn't happening for me, and I moved on to the Italian meringue. Once again, boiling three quarter cup of sugar and one quarter cup of water until it hit 235 degrees Fahrenheit. At the same time, I had the silver fox whipping up two egg whites into stiff peaks. Then stream in that syrup. I've never really had problems with Italian meringue before. It was no different today. I left the mixer running to cool the meringue, and that was fine. But my mind was with the praline. I've made praline before. I don't know what the problem was. It just... <clears throat> Scraping it off the pan revealed how disappointing my results truly were. But I had to pulverize. The blender, the food processor, after whizzing around the block, so to speak, I realized I was now standing in my own filth. The kitchen was disgusting. I was getting angry, frustrated, sweaty. I was claustrophobic. I couldn't breathe. That's when I knew I had to stop. Fade to black. Okay, so <laughs> I'm moving on to this thing called rum imbibing syrup. So I have to add a quarter cup of sugar and three quarter cup of boiling water. Once the sugar dissolves, three tablespoons of white rum. All right, that's rum imbibing syrup. So I got a chill bowl here with some ice cubes. Thank you. Two cups of heavy cream until double its volume. Eject. So in with the Italian meringue, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of vanilla extract and around two cups of the whipped cream. Okay, that is all folded together. Thank you. One cup of the pulverized thou shall not be named. Pralines, pralines. Take one third of the Italian meringue mix, fold that all together. That's our filling. So the time has come to finally unroll this cake. Unrolling the cake, everything is fantastic. Oh, wow, yeah. Okay, that's not a big deal to me. I hope this doesn't ruin everything. This is the rum imbibing syrup. I'm gonna pour a layer of that on top first. Sprinkle it in, she says. I don't know how you sprinkle it, but yeah. On top, the praline filling next. I think an inch border around everything would be smart. Gently roll this back up. Hold steady. Hold steady, please. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, she will hold, she'll hold. All right, that's pretty damn good. I'll take it, I'll take it. Gotta get this seam side down on to our serving dish. Come on, tablecloth trick, come on. I think it would be wise to snip some of the side off there. Same with here. Okay, some parchment paper all around. Frost the cake with the remaining meringue cream. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep this, how about that? That fits, that fits. Uh, I'm gonna keep this in the fridge until I need it down the road and then we'll finish it all off because there's like a little more decorating I have to do. Chill it. I am excited to move on to literally anything else other than cake. Big chunk of meat right here. It is prime rib. Eight and a half pounds of ribeye roast here. And that has one, two, three, four ribs. You know, it's pricey, but it's a lot of meat. I gotta, I gotta trim it and I gotta French it over here. Going by the image there, I have a general idea of what she's after. And I roasted a leg of lamb once and I did not French it. And I should have. <laughs> it's revealing the rib bones underneath here and kind of making them look like you're, you're all fancy. So two inches from the edge, I'm going to cut down. until I hit the bone and then I cut across and then you got to reveal the bone. So cut in between each one. She says remove the backbone, but there's no 
backbone here. Loop around the roast between each rib with some butcher's twine. There we have it, that looks pretty damn good. Kind of Fred Flintstone vibes. She says that the sliced off meat and trimmings here could make for a fine hamburger or beef stew. So that's something to consider. I, I'm just gonna reserve this, save it for a moment that isn't right now. She's saying to leave a thin layer of fat on top. And in the image there, you can see what she's talking about. When I bought mine, they already trimmed it. Uh, and I'm fine with that if I just leave that. There's no mention of seasoning the roast beef. And I found that she had no mention of seasoning the turkey over Thanksgiving too. Um, so I think I just have to take it upon myself to uh, put on my big boy pants and season this beef. Maybe she just assumes I'm wise enough to season it on my own. And thanks to her teachings, I am. So salt and pepper. And yeah, don't forget the sides here. I think I just need to uh, let the salt do its thing. Is it osmosis? Osmosis is when the salt like dissolves into the beef. Uh, osmosis, right? Okay, so we're gonna move on to this Yorkshire pudding batter. Just the batter for now, uh, or what they call it in the States, a popover. Uh, there is, now is, they are, they are pictured right here in this cookbook. Although there is no recipe for popover Yorkshire pudding in this book, which is strange. And I searched all my other Julia Child cookbooks, the ones that I own, and there is no Yorkshire pudding recipe slash popover in those books either. But I'm using a recipe I found online. It's still Julia's, but I don't own the cookbook that has that recipe, Baking with Julia. So uh, yeah, let's keep going. Uh, thank you. Half a cup of flour, one and a half eggs. Yes, I had to delicately split this in half, which I'm doing right now. Just need one tablespoon of melted butter, half a cup of milk, quarter teaspoon of salt, and we whisk. Is this just like a crepe batter? That's what it feels like to me. So there's lumps in this batter, and the recipe says that's okay, but just to be on the safe side, and because I want to kind of filthy up, more things in my kitchen. If I blend it up, I've done this with crepe batters before, so I know I can get away with this. All right, so I got like a muffin tin here. Butter the inside of each cup, butter cup. Distribute the batter as equally as you can. Remember, I'm making around five of these. I'm not gonna need this for a bit, so I'm gonna keep it in the fridge. Roasting pan. And we got our roast here, osmosis complete. And that's gonna place that fat side up. And take some olive oil and just place some in my hand. And the exposed ends of the meat rub with the oil. <laughs> and just the exposed ends, right? Yeah. So for an eight and a half pounder with four ribs, I think I'm looking for a roast time of an hour and 45 minutes. I am aiming for a medium rare color on the inside, like a pinkish hue on the inside, but as a consolation, medium is cool too. The following is a full scale treatment in case this is your first roast beef and you're nervous about having spent all that money for all that meat. Roasting is so easy. Put the meat into a 325 degree oven. You might want to accompany the beef with yellow squash cut into angel hair julienne. Squash, come over here. So I'm gonna bring the whiz kit over here. And I have this Julien plate. I, I've never actually used this before. I think that's what I need, and it's gonna save me a lot of time if I don't have to do this manually. So I'm gonna leave the skin on because I was reading that it's not firm or anything like that. It's actually quite edible. That works. And that's exactly what I was looking for. After exactly an hour, I'm gonna strew in some chopped onions and carrots to the base of the pan. Get it all covered in the beef fat, baste, baste everything, baste everything. Sprinkle the beef with half a teaspoon of thyme. Check back in half an hour. So you know what complements roast beef perfectly? The ying to its yang. 
horseradish. We're gonna make some horseradish sauce. And she has the quick horseradish sauce. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do the more elaborate version. Because why not? I need to make a white sauce. Two and a half tablespoons of butter and three tablespoons of flour. All right, cook that together without coloring. Stir it with your Mr. Grinch spatula. Off the heat, one and a half cups of hot milk. Season and simmer for three minutes. Okay, bring this over here. One, two, three, four, four to five tablespoons of horseradish, two teaspoons of Dijon, a couple droplets of white wine vinegar. So just let that cool for a second before I add in my egg yolks. Just like get a hold of yourself. Horseradish is making me cry. Two egg yolks into the kind of warm mix here. I have to stir fast, I don't wanna cook those. Whisk this slowly over a moderate heat to poach the yolks. Do not bring it to a simmer. And then I gotta whisk in one third cup of heavy cream, up to half a cup. Let's start with one third cup. Easy there, tiger, just by the driblets. We're looking for a consistency of mayonnaise. Maybe just a little more heavy cream there. Okay, I don't think I thickened the sauce enough. Okay, bring this back to a simmer. I've had this on a moderate heat stirring for like 10 minutes, looking out for that mayonnaise-like consistency. Uh, I have a feeling I'm not gonna get it while it's hot like this. So maybe I let it cool a bit. Whoops. It tastes great and it looks great, so I'm really not that concerned. Take it off the heat. been around an hour and four. Pick that up in a second. It's been around an hour and 45 minutes. Hour and 43 minutes. I've inserted the thermometer all over this roast with two different thermometers. Remember, I broke my good one earlier. Uh, the probe is telling me it's way undercooked, and I got this old school one that is telling me it's perfect. Julia is kind of old school, so I figure maybe trust, <laughs> trust old school one. The probe, uh, I don't know. It was in there for an hour and 45 minutes, so I'm just gonna trust. I'm just gonna trust. Okay. Wow. Okay. Grab the bull by the horns, so to speak, onto this platter. Bring that over there, and we tin foil, kind of loosely cover this. You need to let this rest for 25 to 30 minutes to ensure that those juices stay in the roast. Get the oven up to 425 degrees F. Pop over batter, the Yorkshire pudding, you know, that's gonna go in the oven. 25 minutes to start. Woo! Okay, so I need some broccoli. I cut the florets from the central stock I mean, we all know how to cut broccoli. Yeah, for making sure this looks as presentable as possible. So with each broccoli floret, clean up the stem. So I need to blanch the broccoli in boiling water or steam it. I think a nice steam ought to do it. That's around an inch of water, almost to a boil. Colander goes on top, turn the water down. Lid goes on for three to five minutes until they're slightly undercooked and still bright green. If you want a little burst of color for your Christmas broccoli, perhaps a red pepper. I don't need a whole lot, but that should do. Like I see what's going on in that photo. It's like, it's like she's, she's cut it into very thin strips. All right, get the heat going on that roasting pan. Cup of beef stock, scrape up all that good looking fawn. And get all the vegetables all mashed up in there too. Strain it, mash those vegetables. Back onto the heat, bring to a simmer. I'm gonna have to be skimming it. Get rid of that fat, season, oh season. Season. That, my friends, is the au jus, le au jus. Hello cake. So what I'm gonna do with this cake is match what she has in the photo here. Some of this praline can go on the very top. Just enough, there you go. Don't go overboard. 
So I need to add some candied cherries, maraschinos. But before I add them, and because I've got myself into trouble doing this before, I'm gonna dry them off of their liquid that's on top so that it doesn't pollute the top of this cake. Smart move. Wow. Remove the parchment paper that surrounds it. Whew. My masterpiece. Before you screw anything up with that, just get it out of your sight. Okay, I just got the vegetables and the Yorkshire pudding. Okay. Skillet, medium heat, and a couple tablespoons of butter. Toss in that yellow squash. That is way too much, way too much. To saute this in the butter for three to four minutes. Whoa! Turn the oven temperature to 325 because I do want creamier popovers. I'm gonna call them Yorkshire puddings because that's what I grew up saying, okay? And then I need to leave them in there for another, I don't know, 15 minutes or something. Okay, so I need two cloves of finely minced up garlic. We're gonna need a courtesy mince on that. Just whatever frying pan. This is a large march. Line the bottom with some olive oil. Get the heat on. Did I ever tell you what I was doing? I was sauteing some broccoli in olive oil and garlic. In goes the garlic, just for a moment to soften. Then the broccoli. Crack in some pepper and some salt. Toss these around and heat these thoroughly. Making a judgment call that those Yorkshire puddings are done. They look incredible. Poke each one with a knife immediately. We gotta release the steam. That's how you get it out. Hell yeah. Everything is done. Let's plate up. Okay, so the yellow squash with some parsley on top. I'm trying to match the photo as closely as I can. What she does with the broccoli is take some of these red pepper strips and kind of turns them into bows. Turns them into bows. I don't know how to make a bow. Game time decision here. I think I'm gonna move the broccoli over onto this plate. Am I missing anything? Yes I am, the horseradish sauce. Roast beef, broccoli, yellow squash, Yorkshire pudding, horseradish sauce, and a holiday roulade. Order up. This guy over here. I gotta figure out how to carve this thing. The easiest and attractive way to carve the roast is in the vertical English manner. Cut a slice off one end and turn the roast upside down. Okay, how are we looking? How are we looking? That's what I'm talking about. It's very rosy pink. Looks fairly similar to the photo I'm looking in the book there. I like it. I'm gonna like that. What's that? Right, I guess I could eat my vegetables as well. Even that piece of parsley. <sighs> I can't get comfortable in here. It's a disaster in this kitchen. Would you give me a moment? Slice too. 
that was something. Let's start off with the main event here with the juicy, tender roast beef. I was nervous at first about slicing it open. I didn't know what it was gonna look like on the inside. If Julia's cook times could be trusted, my faulty thermometers, I'm not sure. No problems. I was intimidated by how it looked initially, like that big cut of beef. But honestly, I think any sort of skill level could make that and follow along. So don't be freaked out. And that spicy horseradish sauce on top. Uh, those partners in crime, those two. Broccoli is broccoli and yellow squash was really great. I will say, and if I hadn't made the Thanksgiving feast with mashed potatoes, throw them on the plate. Yorkshire pudding, the popovers. Creamy on the inside, marvelous. You know, it's the perfect vessel for the pan sauce and for, you know, slopping everything up. Rolled up a ducking cake. Ducking, I said. It felt good, it felt really good. Uh, this long chapter in my life, I think we can turn the page on that, at least for now, and feel a little better about it than how we ended it last year. Her flavor combos with desserts. You know, you come across a lot of orange, almond, meringue, frickin' praline. Uh, but they work for a reason. They're tried, tested, and true. And I thought that I got close to the photo in this book here with the, the appearance of my cake. I'm actually quite pleased with how it looked in the end. It looked just like that without the green thing on top because I couldn't find whatever that was. And I didn't want it. Yeah, who cares? Oh, okay. I know that not all of that has to be done in one day. Of course, the cake could be done the day before or the a week before and you just have it in the freezer or something like that. But it's possible that it can all be done in one day because I did it. I hope you all can find some enjoyment this holiday season. Have a great one. This is Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. <laughs>